Hey, this is Jimmy Shine, and this is my shop. Today, we're going to be doing a real quick demonstration using the Miller Synchro Wave 210, and this is going to be some roll bar tubing for the 1968 Fastback Mustang of Marvin McAfee. It's very important when you're doing uh, jobs such as this, or any welding for that matter, you need the proper ability to see. So I really like, this is my new Digital Elite Miller welding helmet. And yes, this is a Miller commercial, but I tell you what, I've been using Miller products my whole life and I trust nothing less. So visibility is key. You gotta be able to see what you're doing. And before we do our, our actual welding on the tubing, what I wanna do is do some test samples here on a, on a piece of scrap metal, very much, or the same material that we're gonna be welding on. We wanna make sure that the heat range on the machine is adequate to do exactly what we want to do. And I'm gonna do just that. <laughs> That's beautiful, just like mom used to make. So I've got the, uh, the amperage set at 210, or 110, 110 amps. Like I know what I'm doing, it's a 210 machine, but it's a 110 amps. That test came out real nice, I like it, I approve. So now I'm actually gonna uh, tack together, this is our roll bar tubing. And again, it's, it's important when you're tacking tubing and such, you wanna tack it in more than two places because that becomes a straight line, very easy as you try and move it for it to work and break and come apart. So at a minimum, you want at least three tacks before you move something such as this. And two, it's important to keep your, your welding cup, the torch cup, close to the material. That's why you have the post flow time on the machine. What that does, it keeps that that cone of inert gas around your weld. As that weld is cooling, you want to keep the oxygen off of it so it doesn't actually crystallize the material. Important little tip. Three tacks and she's ready to move. What we're gonna do, this side's been tacked loosen up the clamps. I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna flip it over, but then I'm gonna reclamp it as well. And the reason for doing that, see now, it's actually pretty sturdy. as you're welding, you put weld on there, it's gonna to wanna to heat and move. Metal expands and contracts as you heat it and cool it. So we wanna keep it clamped to the table. I'm gonna tack this side as well. The most visible part of the weld, you know, this being a door bar, this is gonna be the bottom of our door bar down here. So believe it or not, I kinda of actually wanna start my weld in there and work my way around. So my end puddle is kind of in a not so visible spot. So everything's nice and secure. And that's where we're gonna start. What you just saw in that last clip was one of my techniques, and it's, it's pulse welding. You can see how I use the throttle uh, for the pedal, for the arc control. And what that does is I, I, set the, I set the machine, the amperage up as high as I want to be. At this, for this instance, it's at 110 amps. So what I can do is I can actually bury the pedal, bury it, and that gives me all the heat that I want. So I do that little section of a weld, 
and I can back the heat out of it. Not completely, but it allows it to cool. If, if I hold one constant pedal uh, position and amperage, I find that it just puts too much heat in it, to, or too much heat in the weld, and you don't want that. So this allows me to control the heat as I move, and what you'll see is it's actually like, every time I do that weld, it's like moving like a half moon. So one overlaps the other, and it creates that look like a stack of dimes, if you will. And again, it kind of concentrates the heat and such, allows me to control it easier, and this is my technique. I, I could tell you what amperage to set your machine up to. It's one of those type things where it's, it's basically a feel. I can feel it. That's how I am comfortable controlling my weld. You know, again, I'm not here to teach anybody how to weld or, you know, teach a technique. This works for me. If it works for you, then great. But uh, that's the reason why I do that. So there's a couple useful tips on welding tubing for roll cages and such. And again, this is how I do it. Everybody's got different techniques and different ways of doing stuff. This is how it works for me. Hopefully you could apply some of those uh, to your own welding skills. So uh, for more information, uh, or if you'd like to visit uh, the jimmyshine.com website, check out our new business here, see what we're doing, check up on our projects and everything, uh, please do so. Thanks for watching.